welcome to Rewind. It's a great opportunity to catch up with some of the most important industry conversations that happened between industry leaders recently. This is part of the Beat TV and VAB video series called TV Reset. Today, we're gonna to hear a conversation between Rita Farrow, the president of advertising sales at Disney, and Bill Konensberg, CEO, president, and founder of Horizon Media. This conversation is particularly relevant as live sports is returning again to television and multi-screen TV as leagues are coming online again. You're gonna hear the importance of live TV with respect to brand affinity. You're gonna hear about how the belief that every one of the leagues returning is essentially gonna be a shot of adrenaline. You're gonna hear about critical changes in the viewer experience and opportunities for brands to resonate even more deeply. And while there aren't fans, there are gonna be opportunities via second screen and via new technologies that are gonna open up new vistas for viewers. In this interesting world with no fans in the stands, the opportunities for brands to connect in new ways, to engage in new ways, and to have new cultural moments are things that are discussed by Rita and Bill. Enjoy, and I think you're gonna find it a more vital and more relevant conversation than ever before. Good morning, Rita. It's really nice to see you. Likewise. Um, yeah, um, unfortunately in these uh, pretty turbulent times be between COVID and pandemic and now the injustice that we're seeing uh, you know, across our nation, um, I hope you're well and healthy and I appreciate you taking the time to have some nice dialogue with me this morning that we'd normally be doing you know, over a meal someplace in a nice restaurant and you know, now we've all been locked in our homes for the last 10 weeks or 11 weeks, 12 weeks. And I'm, I'm just curious, you know, if I was a fly on the wall, you know, 12 weeks ago when we, we all went home and no one knew kind of where this was going to lead. But more importantly, those first two weeks inside Disney, inside, you know, your bunker with regard to what was happening from an ad supported perspective. Can you share with me a little bit about what those first two weeks were, were like for you and your team? Thanks, Bill. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. So the first two weeks, um, it feels like a, a year ago. It's like, I can't actually believe it's only 12 weeks ago um, because so much has happened and so much has changed. But I would say the first two weeks were really um, about listening um, and hearing our clients. We had a lot of conversations, not only as a team, obviously making sure that first and foremost, our employees were feeling um, set up well uh, and, and understood how to connect with clients and under, understood how to communicate as an organization, uh, which was critically important um, given the amount of conversations we were having with our partners and the types of conversations we were having with our partners. It was a very quick uh, timeline in terms of response, in terms of listening to what people needed, in terms of helping clients and our partners through what they were uh, dealing with in their businesses in real time and being flexible and accommodating to all of those needs while actually um, making sure that we were setting them up for what would be a, a very fluid and ongoing dialogue with every single one of them and their uh, agencies across the next not only two weeks but the, the weeks ensuing that um, when I think back uh, it was such a, a time of, of focus on people and well-being and making sure that people felt safe and understood um, that first and foremost they needed to take care of their families and their teams um, at home and make sure everyone was set up uh, with the ability to be flexible given that people had not only to bring their work home, but also their families home. And so many of our employees have young kids um, and they now became not only our employees, but they also became teachers and, you know, nannies and household, you know, operators in addition to a full-time job. And so we wanted to make sure that we were addressing the needs of our employee base first um, to make sure that they felt comfortable. And then really how that transpired into the conversations with our clients. Some were really hard conversations, right? I, I can tell you, I had a conversation with one of our uh, CMOs who's been a longtime partner and advertiser across Disney, who was really concerned about were they even gonna be able to make payroll the following week and how you have those conversations and make sure that uh, people felt like we were there for them and understood that we this was a long game. We were not going to be making short-term 
financial decisions that impacted the viability and long-term relationships that we had had with our partners to make sure that we could come out of this to whatever the next phase is, because I don't, I don't think the next phase is the new normal. I think the next phase is the next phase um, and really be there for them to understand how we were going to help them through it, how we were going to be flexible and accommodating to that. And then really uh, prepare for the inevitable return and, and rebuild in some cases of their business. Yeah. yeah. Rita, I have to tell you that uh, I give you a, you and your team a gold star, a big one, because it was really simple. How can we help? What can we do for you? You know, we were going through the same thing. I, 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 I drew an analogy to like being in an emergency room and triage those first two weeks where every patient that came in needed help. And those were our clients. And we had multiple, multiple, multiple patients that were not healthy and we needed to react incredibly quickly. And I really feel that the, you know, the Disney team uh, did whatever we needed to do to make our clients feel that we were all working on their behalf. So, so thank you a lot you know, an awful lot for that. Um, you know, question with regard to, so I think everybody took a huge hit in April. You know, there's no doubt about that. Massive articles written, 30, 40% drop in ad revenue. And, and then there's a lot of articles out there right now with regard to the rest of the quarter. And, and we're almost at the end of, of Q2 and going into Q3 where the marketplace, and my clients are reading these articles, where the marketplace is still significantly depressed and uh, huge inventory shortfalls in terms of ad revenue and those clients that, 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 that participate in the upfront now feel that maybe they can get a better deal if they go into scatter. And, and is, is that fact or fiction? Like, give me the honest assessment of where the marketplace is and uh, what you're seeing right now is we kind of come out of Q2 and look to, and look to Q3. Um, great. Well, first of all, thank you for the compliment on my team. I know that, you know, it was really important for us. And given the disruption our own company was going through, I, you know, we had a very um, thoughtful lens that we were looking at everything because as a media and entertainment company, we were also in the travel business and in the retail business. And so obviously, knowing how disrupted we were and how we wanted people to treat our, you know, company. Um, it was very important that we, we took that into account in everything we did. And so that was uh, definitely something that helped inform that. But on, on the notion of, you know, fact or fiction, I, I can only speak for our portfolio of brands. Um, and while I know that there have been some pricing concessions in the marketplace overall as an industry and a marketplace because you're seeing that. And I can tell you just because I, you know, as we brought into RFPs and clients come and look for uh, media buys on our platforms, one of the things that, you know, we have lost some of them because they have specifically said, well, you know, in the X space, and I'm not going to call out any business because that's, you know, it's for, for those uh, teams to be able to, to talk about their own business. Um, you guys are not winning the RFP. You're going to win it here or there or whatever. And so I know that there has been some pricing accommodation across some of our competitors. We have not seen that. Uh, we still have scatter market pricing that is um, well into the double digits across the board. I think part of that is the brands that we represent and, and the amount of inventory um, that we sold last year in the upfront. And frankly, that people didn't really take uh, options at the level that you know had been projected to be taken in the marketplace. A lot of people, when, when what happened happened in March and April, moved money later in the year. They didn't necessarily pull money out. Um, and so we are very well sold across our portfolio of, of properties. And we're also, you know, having conversations uh, around sports and sports coming back. And, you know, some of the leagues have made announcements. Others will be making announcements shortly. And so I think there will be a robust, a robust call it third and fourth quarter in the sports marketplace um, where you might see a, a transition of uh, how uh, business comes back in terms of advertisers wanting to come into the marketplace and, and really take advantage of big opportunities with big audiences in what is you know clearly sports drives cultural moments and, and opportunities to really share in, in what will make people feel like we're getting to some back to some semblance of normal, right? Sports is such a, an identified opportunity in terms of really driving cultural engagement and, and, and opportunities to engage 
together. Um, and even if we can't be in the same room watching together, you're definitely going to be on social media sharing, watching your favorite teams, your college with your college uh, friends, whatever, it, whether it's college football or NFL or Major League Baseball or NBA. Um, but from a, from a pricing perspective, I would say we have not experienced that. So I don't want to say fiction um, because I, I actually don't think that's true for the market, but it's, it's fiction for us, if you will. I don't know. All your competitors telling me you're diving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Great. <laughs> I'm glad they think so. <laughs> yeah. No, but I have to tell you something. I, I couldn't think of one other company um, that took as much pain as Disney did you know, when this hit, when you think about the studios and no one going to the movies, you think about Disney cruises and no one taking cruises. You think about the theme parks and no one going to the theme parks. You think about ESPN and all the sports that, that came off the table. Um, you had to be in a better position than anybody to understand the pain that, that marketers were going through. And I think that's one of the reasons why you, you reacted the way you did in terms of helping everybody out. And when you when you talk about the sports the sports side, so you're you're very optimistic. Uh, let, let's chat a little bit about that because obviously it's an enormous uh, revenue stream for ESPN. Yeah. Um, it's a shot of adrenaline into culture of America to have sports come back. Can you share with me at least what you what you know right now about NFL and college football, which are the two the two biggest platforms I think on on ESPN for the fall. Um, and what's the current um, plan that you know of with sports returning? Yeah, well, I, I think what, what I know a lot in, in terms of sports returning is what you're reading in the press. And so they, I, it is clear that there is a lot of preparation happening. NFL, as you know, already announced, um, but Major League Baseball, Major League Soccer, NBA, there is a lot of press around the amount of preparation that is uh, those leagues are going through right now to get back into gameplay. Um, and so while I don't have any concrete answers I can share today because the leagues haven't really finalized anything with us to be able to share that, um, I can tell you that the there is a plan in place and, and there is tremendous momentum and movement. Um, it's been in the press, so this is not surprising that, you know, two of those leagues are actually talking to us at Wild World of Sports in Orlando to be able to house in one location um, and gameplay in one location all of the rest of the seasons for both of those leagues. And so you know, I'm very optimistic about what, what that means for, for at least those two leagues, because I, I think we are um, very excited about the planning that's going on, obviously. And the planning is hugely enormous, not only because of obviously the, the protections that have to be in place now, but how they're going to produce, what it means for fans, how are they going to work with their league partners um, you know, when you think of the the sponsors that any of these leagues have in terms of really adding value to their partnerships, as well as the media partners that they're working with, uh, whether it's us or, or any of our competitors, um, to bring those games to audiences. So I'm very optimistic about what it means for sports. I think, will it change how sports are covered? For sure. Do we think about, you know, how we're going to have second screen experiences that engage fans and allow for sharing of, you know, the excitement of play of action when you can't necessarily have full uh, stadiums full of people. Uh, even if they allow some fans in, it's never going to be the full packed sold out stadium and the energy that that brings to a game. And yet you can create so much of that, as you saw when we produced the NFL draft with 200 live feeds from around the country, there was a tremendous uh, engagement around that property. And it was the biggest NFL draft of all time because it was covered differently and relevant for the times and how people were consuming those sports. And so I think it's done uh, it, it's opened our eyes to ways that you can do things very differently than before, that it's, it's different. It's not necessarily better or worse. It's real for right now. Um, and we're excited about what that means. And I know Jimmy and his team have been really prepping for how we're going to cover sports from a talent perspective, from an on-site perspective, and really the fan engagement perspective on second screen experiences as part of the go forward. And, I, and, and you know what, Rita, I think that, that obviously, you know, we all believe the country needs sports back in such a big way. It is the heart and soul of bringing America together. And I think we need it more than ever before. And Disney has always been known for innovation. I mean, that's where Walt Disney started with, mm -hmm. with imagination and innovation. And I do agree what you did with the draft was 
was amazing. And when you think about the possibilities of creative innovation of what you can do now with uh, fanless sports and how creative you can get with bringing the game to life in other ways, um, you must be thinking about some really exciting platforms. And I hope you come to us first to discuss <laughs> those <laughs> because we want to, to break through for our clients and we want to have unique experiences. Um, is there anything that you can, that you can talk about or are they still on the drawing board? Cause I do think you have a tremendous opportunity. Yeah, we do. Um, we're actually brainstorming right now. And, and specifically you have two big, uh, partners of ours in Geico and, and cap one who are big sports partners. Um, and, and we are working with our biggest sports partners now and, and really trying to identify the things that really matter to them because they are unique conversations. It's not the same thing across the board for all of these partners. And so when you think of a partner who is on site for college game day, for example, you know, they like that experience of touching the fan in that way. And how do you re recreate the touching the fan experience in a virtual world? It can actually potentially be broader and, and, and a larger reach than actually the people that you would touch on site. But there are reasons why partners come on board for certain properties and how they activate. And so it is a one-to-one -one conversation with each brand to make sure as we think about what it looks like on the other side, it addresses the KPIs they're looking to solve for. Um, but we are super excited because I, you know, the the whole notion of creative works and how we've brought together creative executions for brand partners in this time has really challenged us in ways that we thought we'll never be able to deliver something in 48 hours, and yet we have. And it's been a ton of fun to work on. It's been a ton of work. I'm not gonna lie, um, but it's been a ton of fun to work on because it does create bigger opportunities that, by the way, when, when we get back to whatever the new normal is, will allow us to continue to do those things and activate in, this, in traditional ways where you can touch the fan physically. Um, and so we're super excited about that. I will ask you though, Bill, on, on your side with the clients that you have, do they ask you and your teams on, as you think about what the new normal is in sports, for things that are unique to any particular league or are, are they thinking about in a world of you know social distancing and or you know what could be uh, you know maybe a year or two years until we have a vaccine where people go back to normal or will people even ever go back to normal if, if once we do have a vaccine or whatever do they talk to you about ways that your teams could be helping them innovate around creative and storytelling so, Rita, it's a great question. And yeah, we are in, you know, 24-7 conversations, you know, with our clients. Tone right now in today's environment is really important in terms of how they behave in the, in the marketplace. But every single one of them are looking for uniqueness. So, you know, you've come to us with some ideas that are very brand specific and it's wonderful because every client doesn't want to feel that, that they can just slap another client's logo onto some idea. And as you know, each brand has its own unique personality. So we are thirsting more than ever before. Media and creative are, are working hand in hand and creative has to do with fan experience. It has to do with your user experience on your platforms. It has to do with commercial flow as well, not just the messaging that's out there. So every single one of our clients, especially those heavily invested in sports, where engagement and authenticity is critical. Uh, we are looking and obviously chatting with your teams as well about how to bring that uniqueness to life in the, in, in the new world that we're living in. 